in the chat box. Uh, you could drop questions that you may have. And again, this is our Trading Basics course. So as you guys ran into questions this week, drop them in the chat. And uh, this is a value adding uh, add-on to you guys for you know being a part of the community, being a part of the team. And so drop your questions. There's no dumb question except the question that you do not answer. And if it is a dumb question, I'll let you know. But most cases, guys, there is no dumb question. So drop some questions in the chat because, uh, because um, that's how it will guide us. All right. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So let's start off with some basics here. Uh, I'm going to go into trading view for a second. So guys, remember, we use trading view to chart, MT4 to trade. By the way, guys, okay, by the way, if you do not drop questions, then we don't have anything to go over, okay? So just understand that you are an important part of this. And... Um, Make sure you guys drop us some questions that you've had over the last week. All right. So we're going to look at a few things. Um, Forexfactory.com, guys, as you guys start your trading day tomorrow or tonight, as you go into the night, go to Forexfactory.com. All right. We're pretty clear through midnight, which most of us aren't trading until London or after. London, you guys are pretty clear. Yellow folders mean it's very low impact. Okay. 8.30 a.m., there's some orange folders. That's That means medium impact for Canadian news and U.S. dollar news. So be careful with those. They may shift your trades, okay? 10 a.m., British pound, okay? And uh, U.S. dollar at 10 a.m. has very high volatility news. Those are red folders. So be careful with those trading New York session tomorrow. So 8.30 to 10 a.m., uh, you guys can see some shifts in volatility. Be careful. All right, especially as you approach 10 a.m. with things like US 30, any USD pairs. Okay, be careful with that. Before we look at charts, let's look at how crypto is looking today. Uh, you can go to coinmarketcap.com, one of my favorites. Just go in here and it gives you some pricing and we can maybe look at Bitcoin in a second. Uh, we had some big news drop earlier today, which literally dropped, um, you know, dropped Bitcoin you know, well over six, $700 a coin, which is about six, 700 pips. Um, so definitely big drop today. Uh, there was a Korean um, exchange where, you know, you trade digital currencies. It was raided today. And so what happens is, you know, most likely most of that digital currency is either gone or it's going to be locked up and it dropped the price. Okay. So today has been a down market on the crypto because of news, but Still very bullish on cryptocurrency, all right? I see some questions coming in. I love it. Make sure that uh, you guys drop us some more questions. We got a few there. Let's get some more, okay? All right. So let's look at a couple things, guys. DXY. So DXY, uh, you're looking at the strength of the US dollar. You want to look at it at um, usually on the daily, okay? Now, I will tell you... Um, I still see this thing going down, all right? I still see this thing going down. I do not see this thing going up. And I haven't seen it going up for a long time. I don't know why I was pointing up, but, um, you know, as you guys see, it continues to do lower highs, lower highs, lower lows, lower high, lower low, lower high. I, I see this thing continuing to drop. So what that means is any any USD pairs, with USD at the front of it, USD is dropping. It means, you know, US pairs are going to be bearish. Uh, Euro USD could be bullish. So um, I guess that's a good little lesson I'll show you guys real quick. So for instance, if your pairs are looking like this, USD, JPY, okay, and the DXY is on a downtrend, that means USD, JPY is bearish. If you guys don't know what bearish means, I have a video on that, but bearish means sell, bearish means it's dropping, okay? But if it's Euro USD, because USD is at the bottom portion, if USD is, is dropping, then we could say that Euro USD is bullish, which also means that it's buying, okay? So when you guys see DXY dropping, anything with USD at the front, 
means that it's probably or possibly also going to drop depending on which one's stronger that day. But it means US dollar is going to most likely continue to drop. Euro USD would be going up if DXY is going down. All right. So DXY still very weak. We got to see how things start pairing out for us. Very interesting though, how USD is very weak, but US 30 continues to rally up. All right. So US 30 guys is the Dow Jones continues to rally up. It's approaching pre COVID pricing. So here's pre COVID pricing at this all time high and it continues to blow to the upside. Now, many are saying that this is because of a bad economy, or I'm sorry, an inflated economy. Um, we got to see how this whole thing pans out. But, you know, uh, what's happening right now is good for corporations. It's good for all those of us living in the U.S., but it's very weird because we have a weak dollar, but strong um, stock market. That's why a lot of people are saying the stock market is in a bubble. All right. So. That's just some extra stuff so you guys can start thinking about the mindset of trading and, you know, some things to look for, guys. All right. So let's get into some of these questions. Let's see what you guys have for us today. Um, and, you know, real quick, let's look at Bitcoin together. So. So. Bitcoin guys, man, dropped today, nasty. But because Bitcoin has held onto this area, guys, there's a very strong area right here. I'm still very bullish on Bitcoin. Now, remember what I said a second ago. DXY is very weak. So Bitcoin, it has BTC in the front. So remember, Euro USD would be what? Bullish. BTC USD, since dollar is still weak, I'm still expecting Bitcoin to rally up. Okay, and head into the 13,000 area. Now, the question is when right now, Bitcoin is collecting a lot of orders, a lot of orders, guys. Okay, but here's what happened the last time that Bitcoin collected a lot of orders. I actually caught this trade right here. Okay, Bitcoin shot up, boom. Okay, I also caught this move right here. Bitcoin shot up, boom. Okay. So we can expect Bitcoin to come back up as long as the dollar stays weak and Bitcoin stays on people's minds. We could still see a very strong um, BTC movement to the upside. Okay. How can you trade multiple accounts? What is your best account size to trade DCX? Trade. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Great questions, guys. All right. We're going to rock it. Let's go. Let's go. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, let's rock this thing. So let's, I'll start from the bottom. Cause I like that question. Simple question. Janet says, how can you trade with multiple accounts? Okay, Janet. So let's say for instance, you know, whatever broker you're using. Okay. Within that broker, you literally are going to create another account. So for instance, I don't know what you're trading with, but Hugo's way, KLT Forex, uh, you know, uh, coin X, whatever. Uh, account you're using, most of them that I've used let you create multiple accounts. So let's say you want to have an account strictly to trade digital currencies on MT4. Let's say you want to have an account just for indices. Let's say you want to have an account just for, um, you know, uh, 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 you know, DeLorean. What you want to do is create multiple accounts within your broker. And every time you create an account, at least for Hugo's Wayne KLT 4X, what they do is they send you an email. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go to your MT4 trader, okay? And then on your MT4 trader, you're going to go ahead and come in here and you're going to go to settings. And in your settings, it's going to say new account. You're going to click new account and you're going to literally add the account that they emailed you. They're going to email you an account number and they're also going to email you a password. It is not the password that you log into your broker with. It is another random password that the broker creates with numbers and letters. And so what you're going to do is go to your MT4, type in those numbers and letters for both your account number and your password. And now if you have three or four, whatever amount of accounts you're going to create, you're going to go ahead and log into all of them through your MT4. And now when you want to switch between accounts, all you need to do is when you go to your accounts on MT4, you click here. And then all your different accounts will show up. And then what you want to do is 
you'll click in between them and you can also have your demo there and you can click in between your demo and your reel especially when you're starting out you don't want to be taking all your own trades you don't want to get caught up in that so you want to be taking you know um trades that have been verified through educators and the platform so that's how you would do it all right that's how you trade with multiple accounts i definitely recommend if you guys are trying out different things don't do it all in one account you know, if you're doing DeLorean, only do DeLorean on an account. If you're going to do digital currencies with swipe point, only do that on one account so that you can see what you're having success in. But my biggest thing I would say is follow one course until successful. Okay. So that's what focus stands for. So don't try to do 30 strategies. Try to focus in on one. Okay. What is the best account size to trade DCX like Bitcoin? So check this out. It's almost like indices, meaning you would want like a thousand dollar account, you know, maybe 500 at the least, but guess what? KLT Forex and I believe CoinX, you can actually trade digital currencies at a penny, all right? At a penny. And so what that means is 0.01 is, 10, is not 10 cents, on KLT Forex, it's one penny. Why is that cool? Because now you can trade Bitcoin at five cents a pip. So if you have a very small account, you can still trade these volatile pairs and it's actually not a lot. Okay, it's actually not a lot. Um, just because it's coming to my mind, if you guys want to trade indices and uh, you don't have a lot of money, there's a, a, a a, an account i think it's with fx choice okay where you can trade on fx choice don't you i want you to do your homework on this but i think that here um it, us 30 is not as volatile meaning you know how in us 30 when it says 375 let's say for instance it would usually be uh 3750 pips so let's say you go in here, this is US 30. So on my broker, this one candle right here, you see it says 361, that's actually 3,601 pips or 3,610 pips on KLT Forex. But I think it's FX choice where that would actually only be 360 pips. So the point of what I'm trying to make is FX choice is pretty cool. If I'm not mistaken, do your homework, ask them. But FX Choice may be the one where you can trade US 30 with less money. But on the flip side, KLT Forex is where you guys can actually trade um, Bitcoin. But instead of it being 0 0.01 10 cents, 0 0.01 is a penny. You could trade Ethereum, Ripple, 0 0.01 is a penny. Check how cool this is. Let's say, for instance, your position, you know, for you to have good risk management should only be 10 cents per Bitcoin. Uh, per, per, per trade on Bitcoin. Well, now you can split it up into multiple positions. So you could do a third, uh, instead of doing 10 cents in one trade, you could do three cents, three cents, four cents. And now you could have 10 cent position on Bitcoin per pip, but you can split it up between three different, um, three different trades. So you could have three different, um, take profits for instance, but still be within 10 cents a pip. So that's pretty cool. So if you guys want to trade uh digital currencies and you don't have a big account klt forex is probably the best way to go you could probably start trading with 100 bucks on here okay um obviously you know a bigger account is going to be better you know if you can do three to five hundred but you can do smaller accounts on klt forex and it'll still work all right all right by the way i am not making recommendations on brokers i'm giving you guys ideas you guys need to do your homework on these brokers and uh you know you trade with them at your own risk okay i'm not allowed to recommend brokers i'm just telling you guys the ones that i know of have experience with and things that may help you guys okay let's see what else we got is it easier to trade with metatrader 4 on a laptop versus your phone here's the thing guys okay here's the thing Okay, let me see if my computer will even open up MetaTrader 4. I don't know if you guys have seen what MetaTrader looks like on your computer, but it's not pretty. <laughs> it's not pretty, okay? Um, here's the cool thing about trading MetaTrader 4 on your computer. And by the way, if you have a, a PC, it's actually better uh, to do it 
on a PC, it's easier, not better. It's simpler to do it on a PC than it is on a Mac. All right, let me see if I can even get this thing open. It may not even open for me because sometimes it's like insane. But here's the thing about MT4, guys, okay? The thing about MT4 is that on the computer, it's like MS-DOS. Now, some of you guys are not even old enough to know what MS-DOS is. But MS-DOS was when the original PC computers would open up, it would look like a freaking, you know, 1992 type of program. So it's a pain in the butt, all right? I'm not gonna lie to you. You, got, it, you have to kind of learn how to use it. Um, so what I typically do is I chart on MT4, I'm sorry, I chart on TradingView, okay, website, and then I enter my trade on MT4. But here is the downside to that, is that you guys see the price here of US 30, for an example? Let's go to my, my, my trading account and find out. So if I was to go to US 30 right now on my trading account, It's not too, it's actually not off that bad. It's 29,123 and it's 29,122 there. Not that bad. Okay, so it's off by like one, um, one point. Let's see how far off Bitcoin is real quick. So Bitcoin right now is at 11,434. And on, and on my account, I, I'm using um, KLT4X. I have it at 11,432. So it's a difference of about $3. So it's about three pips off. Now, here's the reason I'm bringing this up. Because I'm using the pricing on Trader TradingView, and they're not always going to have your broker, um, then what happens is the price may be a little off compared to what's on your phone on MT4. So the upside to you guys using MT4 on your computer is that the price is going to be exact. So whatever it is that you enter, you're gonna know the exact price so you can calculate your stop loss take profit. That's why MT4 is cool to use because you can actually have MT4 on your laptop, computer, whatever it is. And when you press enter, you can do it on your computer. And by the way, it'll also come up on your phone, on your app, okay, uh, on MT4. But you're gonna have to learn how to use it. It's not user friendly. It's not like the app on the phone, okay? So the downside is if you're gonna use MT4 on your computer, um, you're gonna to have to learn basically how to use it. It's a whole different program. It's very old school. You may still use TradingView anyways because it doesn't have all of the cool gadgets that TradingView has, okay? So what I do and what most of the traders are doing nowadays, guys, is they chart on TradingView they enter on MT4 on their phone. That's what most of the educators are doing right now. That's what I do. But if you want to use MT4 on your computer, the good thing is it's a very accurate price. So whatever the number is on your screen is what it's going to be. TradingView will sometimes be, and most of the times be a few pips off. So it's going to be harder to calculate exactly your take profit and your, um, and your stop loss. Okay, I hope that helps you guys. Lewis, yes, you do. You need to download um, MT4 to trade on your phone, okay? My MT4 on my computer just is waiting for updates and never loads. Yeah, Isaac, that's what I'm saying. And you probably, if I'm guessing, Isaac, you probably have a Mac. And so what happens is, MT4 for the computer on Mac just doesn't work well. Here's what I'll tell you. Trading view is, if you would go back to, you know, if this was 1999, if this was 2004, you know, if you went back 10, 15 years, you would literally have to pay like $1,000 for this uh, program for trading view. And right now you can get a free, free account, you know, eventually you want to upgrade it, you can upgrade it but you can get a free account. It, it, this thing's worth thousands, thousands of dollars. It, it's insane um, what you get for free on TradingView, all right? Let me go back. I know you guys asked a lot of good questions. Thank you guys for, for you know, um, being involved and, and sharing questions. I'm gonna try my best to get through as many as I can. I don't like to keep us too late, but I'm gonna get through a few, okay? 
Let's see what we got. Uh, can you point me in the direction of DeLorean? I have to do boot camp, but I'm still missing a few things that makes me successful and not the stats. Um, Amber, let me know how deep you've gotten in with DeLorean. Uh, what, how deep have you gotten in and what is it that you feel you're missing? And I'll point you in the right direction. General questions on how to look and work DeLorean and the DLO alerts. Okay, got it, got it. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Drop any questions you have and we'll go for da -da -da. How do you calculate wicks of a candle to determine whether or not the candle goes to the rise? Oh, hope this makes sense. Yeah, Bethany, what you're saying is you're trying to see price action. Okay, you're, you're talking about price action. So what, what Bethany is talking about is she's saying, how do I know candles and wicks? And we talked a little bit about this, I think, last week. What you guys want to pay attention to is this. Okay, you see these wicks here? Okay, you want to pay attention to these wicks. Wicks, write this down. Wicks means rejection. Wicks means rejection. It means it tried to make a move and it just simply could not do it and it comes back down. Okay, now a cool thing that you guys can do, Picasso is teaching us a lot of this uh, from DCX and, and basically the concept is you can come to uh, here and there's something called a line chart. Look at this. You see that line chart. Now, here's the cool thing about a line chart is it doesn't give you the wicks. It only gives you where the body of the candle closes. Now, why is that cool? Because it actually is showing you true support and resistance. What happens is, guys, if you only look at candles, and by the way, I've trained my eye to mostly look at candles. Now I'm trying to teach myself to also use the line charts. But basically what happens is, you know, you, you, get, you get kind of like, you can get thrown off by the wicks, okay? So what I would just tell you is, look, the wicks are never going to tell you everything. But what they do is they show you enough, okay? They show you enough so that you can start, you know, kind of figuring out what may happen next. All right. So for instance, guys, when I see a wick, like, look at this, this is already an area of strong support. Okay. And so when you see price come down here and wick up, it means that there's a lot of buyers in this area. And most likely it's not, it's not going to be able to drop through there. Now, personally, I'm very bullish on Bitcoin, meaning I think it's going to go up, but because of what Bitcoin's been doing right now, a lot of consolidation, a lot of uncertainty, I'm just waiting right now before I make another decision on what to do. The news today just shot the thing down. But, you know, really what I think is happening on the bigger time frame is it's collecting people's money to then explode to the upside. That's what I expect Bitcoin to do right now, which is exactly what it did down here at 9,000. Okay. It's just collecting orders right now before it goes up, okay? But the more you guys learn how to trade, the more that you guys like just see stuff. Like, look at this. This is called a head and shoulders. So price goes up, comes down, goes up, comes down, goes up. News triggers, comes down. This is called a head and shoulders pattern on the daily and guys, it just, it literally wicked off this daily zone and just shot down 800 pips. Okay. Not bad. You can literally scalp cells on Bitcoin, catch 800 pips. And we're expecting this thing to shoot up, you know, just to 13,000 guys would be 1,754 pips. Okay. I'm not giving you a trade signal. I'm just telling you what I'm expecting on the long term right now. Okay. All right, so wicks just mean rejection. When you see rejection, that just means it's an area, a key area of support and resistance, okay? And um, support and resistance is in your, um, it's in your academy. I could literally teach you wicks for like an entire class. Uh, Amber, for that last question, I would say I want you to study up um, Abel Melendez, he really goes deep into what I'm doing right now. I would study Abel Melendez. I would go to his favorites. Anything that says, you know what you're asking me, Amber, I want you to write this down. It's called market structure. 
Whenever you hear this word market structure, that's what you're asking me right now. I want you to study that. Go to Abel Melendez, look for market structure. He's going to give you some good stuff, okay? Let's see what else. What other questions we got, guys? Let's see what we got. How do you save your indicators on TradingView? All right. So let's do this. So let's say, for instance, you wanted to add, you come here. You come here, I forget, it messes me up. There it is, FX. You come here, let's say you want to move, you want to add an EMA. So you come down and you look for EMA and you go, okay, here is an EMA. All right, actually, let me do it this way better. Boom. Moving average, EMA is actually moving average exponential. Bam, I just added one. There it is. Okay, where is it? It's this little line right here. And then you want to add, I don't know, you come back, you want, you say, you know what? I want to add a Bullinger band because my educator is talking about Bullinger bands. Oh, so now you got Bullinger bands and you got an EMA. Okay. Um, and let's say for whatever reason you wanted to add volume as well. So you come in here and you add volume. Boom. All right. Now, obviously, you, if you don't know what any of these are, that's okay. You would learn, you know, but let's say for an example, you wanted all this on your chart and you say, okay, but now I want to save my settings so that the next time I come here, my settings are going to be there. How do I do this? There's a little button up here. Okay. That says indicator template. You're going to click that. You're going to click where it says save indicator template. You're gonna put a name to your template and you're gonna press save. And now every single time that you come back, your indicator template is gonna be here. Look at all these templates, guys, that I have recorded and saved, okay? So that's how you do it, okay? And now let me show you a little trick. I had to find this stuff out on my own, by the way. It took me forever. It took me a lot of trial and error to learn this thing. But once you save your indicator template, if it's one of your favorites, you can come in, you see this little star? You can click it. So you see I have binary daytime, I, you know, and I have it clicked. Look, DeLorean, I've got it clicked. Forex, I got it clicked. Guess what? Now I don't even have to go into my template. I literally have it here. So look, I've got my, my this is a, a strategy I created for binary options right here. Also works for Bitcoin. Look, I have my strategy right here. It's saved, boom. You know, I also have this strategy here for indices. Boom, there it is. So you can literally save your indicator templates that way, guys, okay? Add your, add your uh, indicators, go here, save your indicator template, and then every time you come in, you can just literally add that. Now, by the way, this is really cool. Um, whatever you set up your chart as, okay? You can, whether it, and, and that includes the indicators, However you leave your chart, you go to your MetaTrader 4 app. I'm sorry, not MetaTrader 4 app. TradingView has an app. You sign into TradingView and guess what? It's going to look exactly the same with the indicators, with whatever you drew. It'll be on your TradingView app the same way that it is on your TradingView website. So that's pretty cool. All right. Uh, what's the difference between Forex and indices? Indices are based on indexes, all right? We're getting deep now. So let's say US 30, this is an indice, okay? Investors would call these indexes. What is an index? It is a, co it's, it's a collection of stocks within a stock market, okay? And then as the price collaboratively moves up or down, it moves up or down. So for instance, this is US 30, top 30 stocks inside of the Dow Jones. But guess what? There's also an indice called UK 100. It is the top 100 stocks inside of the United Kingdom stock market. Okay, there's one for Japan. Uh, there's also uh, called the German 30, okay, for instance. All right, this is the top 30 stocks inside of the German index. So the point is indices, I want you to think of an index. What is an index? It is a, it is a group 
of stocks. And as those stocks move up and down, you can trade it like if it's a Forex pair. But the cool thing is it can make you a lot of money. For instance, look at this. Now, remember, I think it was Bethany, you asked me about wicks. What do you see right here? Check this out. You see these wicks? Boom. Wicks this area shoots straight up. It says, oh, heck no, nah. we're not staying here. We're moving. By the way, this is COVID. Drops the stock market in Germany. Wicks off this area, says, not today, Satan. Shoots up. And guys, here's the point. Off of these wicks, if you would have entered this, this is, this is like US 30, just to here, okay, just to here, this is about, this is about, depending on how this is calculated, if it's calculated like US 30, my broker would pay 16,000 pips. Just this little bit right here. It's about 16,000 pips, okay? That's why you trade indices. So indices are stocks uh, uh, inside of the stock market grouped together. And as the total value moves, uh, that moves. And, and by the way, when you guys hear the numbers on CNBC and, and all these different um, you know, websites or, or cable channels, when they say the stock market is up or down, they're really just calculating the top stocks. Okay. So like us 30 is just the top 30 stocks, not actually giving you the value of all of them. Okay. All right. Good question, Larry. I'll look at gold in a second. Let's see what else we got. Certain checklists we should go through when trading forex. Evan, here's the thing. Okay. That's a great question, Evan. Yes, you should have a checklist when you're entering a trade, but it depends on the strategies that you're using. So for instance, if you're trading, you know, like I have a group of people trading a gold cup and they do what's called price trap. And price trap is just that. They trap the price in a small area. They wait for price to break out and they enter. But those rules are going to be different than DeLorean. Why? Because DeLorean has four steps, has red EMAs going through the candles, and you got to confirm the four steps. And those four steps are your checklist. So the answer to your question, Evan Cass, is that yes, you should have a checklist, but the checklist will depend on the strategy that you're using. Okay. And because all of you are doing different strategies, I would focus on the educators that are teaching you the strategy and that is the, the, uh, the checklist that you would go by. Okay. I hope that helps. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Now, Amber says, when someone says trading portfolio, what does that look like online portfolio? Can you help with, if you have a few hundred dollars, this, uh, this is from Amber, uh, a good leverage. If you think of trader's way, oh, okay. By the way, trader's way, Trader's Way is a very, I, I mean, I don't, I can't put my stamp of approval on, but I would say Trader's Way is great historically, uh, been around for a long time. That's why Trader's Way is a really good broker. But if you want to trade gold, the minimum is a dollar a pip. So you cannot trade less than a dollar a pip on gold. You cannot trade any cryptocurrencies, digital currencies on Trader's Way. And I don't know if they have indices on Trader's Way. So those are the downsides to Trader's Way, but it's, it's been around for a long time, really cool. Um, you know, here's what I tell people, Amber, first account, two, 300 bucks. Two, 300 bucks, first live account. You don't need to go long, bigger than that on your first account in your first two weeks, three weeks. Why? Just experience tells me, start small. Once you know what you're doing and you're consistent, then you could do your thousand, two thousand dollar account, all right, or whatever amount you choose to. But first account, two, three hundred bucks. But with two, three hundred bucks, you guys can trade pretty much anything except US 30. Do not trade US 30 unless it's on FX choice, like I mentioned. But with two or three hundred dollars, you, you could trade pretty much anything you want at like 10 cents a pip, okay, and you could still have good risk management. So, yes, with, with a 500 leverage, like a lot of these people have now, you can do enough with two, three hundred bucks. Okay. Okay. Janet is asking a great question. 
She says, when trading on Gold Live, how do you know when putting your entry in MetaTrader 4 is the same as the person on Gold Live? Now, when you say, Janet, how do you update your membership? I'm not sure what you mean by that, okay? But when trading on Gold Live, how do you know when putting your entry is the same? Okay, very important. And this is something that I learned, guys, even on like uh, when I was doing binary options. You need to pay attention to the price that the educator is getting in on. Okay, so for instance, right now, German 30 is at 13,348. If he gets in right now and I'm not paying attention and it's moving, I need to know when did he get in. And this is why sometimes the educators get frustrated because people are not paying attention. And so the guy's been in 27 minutes the, and, and you don't even know what the heck is going on and you don't know what price they entered at. Now, here's, let me show you something on, on Go Live real quick. When you go to go live, let's see, let's see what we got going on here. Let's go to an educator. All right, let's go to, oh, my boy Curtis Cobain is on. I'm gonna watch him a little later today. All right, so let's say for instance, let me see, now he didn't put nothing in the chat. Like for instance, let's go to one of my favorites. Let's go to Mr. Patrick Kenny. Let's go down here, DeLorean. Go down here, Patrick Kenny. You come here and you go to my messages only. Okay, I guess it doesn't show you the old chat. And then what happens is it'll only show you the, the messages from the educator. So I would come in, like if you're trading DeLorean, go to my messages only and it'll only show you the messages of Patrick Kenny. I think it'll also show you your messages, but it'll show you the teacher's messages specifically so sometimes a trade will get lost in the chat but why am i telling you this when the educator puts the trade coordinates is what it's really called they'll put the stop loss they'll put the entry point they'll put the, the take profit in the chat guess what you do you go look at where price is and you compare the numbers and that's how you're gonna know if that educator entered the price around the price that you entered so Theoretically, you can get in later than the educator, but you better be paying attention to price. And it is frustrating because sometimes there'll be a, a trade, 10 pips in profit, 20 pips in profit, almost about to close. And then people get in and say, can I get in now? No, you can't get in now. You're not paying attention. So pay attention to the numbers of where the entry point is, and that'll help you verify if, uh, if, um, you can still get in, okay? Let's see what else. I'm glad, good engagement guys, good engagement on this call tonight. Thank you for these questions. That's really, really great. Amber, I'll, I'll go into the DLO stuff here in a second. Um, before we end the call, okay? I'll, I'll do that as the end. I'll go through that, the DeLorean. So, da, 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 da. Yes, Amber, yes. You see, it, it, Trader's Way does not have US 30. That's what I thought too. So I, you know, again, I don't want to recommend anything. I really like KLT4X. If I ever have an issue with them or heard of, hear about an issue, I will let you guys know. But that's why I like KLT4X. They have US 30. The digital currencies, you could do them at as little as a penny a pip. I mean, you know, it's really, really cool. Okay, let's see what else. Any other questions, guys? Any other questions? I know we had the question on gold also. Okay. What is it that you mentioned about weeks collecting orders? How can we avoid those? Okay, let's talk about that. Okay, okay, so Janin says, how do you update your membership to Elite? Okay, this is how you do it. All right, you go to im.academy. So it's a different website than im.center. Log in.
All right, you go here to this little gear. Scroll down. And you guys see this? It says Elite Pack. That's how you change it. You can change it to any pack you want. Now, very, very important. Very, very important. It will not actually change until the week of your billing. So if you come in here and you change your package, you will not have access right away, guys. You have access on your next billing cycle. I did ask corporate about this a little while ago, and they did mention that they were going to eventually make it so that you can immediately do it and it would you would have to pay for it up until your next bill date. So it'd be like a smaller payment right away. But until now, it'll change on your next bill date, but it will not bill you today. It'll bill you on your next bill date. Okay, so that's how you change it. I am Academy. Press the little gear, scroll down, change your pack. Okay. Kevon, HFX is like, uh... all right, so Amber's asking me about FRX and so is Kevon. So we'll, we'll tackle that. So this is HFX, guys. You go to race option. Actually, you don't go to, there's also another one called Biddy Forex, which is what most of my people are using now. Okay. Either one is cool. So here's the thing about this. Okay. I'm gonna tell you guys the upsides and the downsides, okay? Upside is this thing is very simple. It's based on Forex, but the way it works is all you need to do is you literally just press buy or sell, which buy is call and put is sell, okay? And so basically, I'll give you guys an example. Look, I'm going to enter this trade. I just entered a trade. This is a demo account, so don't worry. Okay, look, I entered this trade. If price goes down even one pip, I just made $7.60 profit. But if price goes against me even one pip, I will lose the $10 that I just put up. Okay, so basically what HFX is is you don't even have to count pips. You don't need a stop loss. You don't need to take profit. You literally just enter the trade. And if it goes in your direction, you make money. Okay. So in this case, hell, I, I made, I made money on that trade. It barely even moved and I made money. <laughs> All right. That was as simple as it is. Okay. So basically it is based on Forex. You press the stinking button and you're in. Now here's the cool thing is that the broker or the, the educators that teach this, you literally get on their session and they're like, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, you're done. There are times that I would come into this and in 20 minutes, I'd hit my percentage go and I'd stop. Also, this is very good because you can trade it almost any time of the day. You don't need to have like sessions because it, it, it just moves enough for you to make money at any point of the day, okay? And sometimes when it's slower, is even better. So you can trade this in 12 in the afternoon. You can trade this at six at night. You can trade this in the middle of the night. You can trade this whenever, basically. So it's pretty cool. The downsides to this is when you go to withdraw from these guys, sometimes it takes over a week to get your money. Most Forex brokers, you have it in 24 to 48 hours. Um... Sometimes the, the smallest accounts you could do on here, they publish it as 500, but you can actually send them 250. Okay. The brokers are kind of funny, you know, so you're not going to send a lot of money to these things, but what you can do is grow an account. So Maddie Pitts, who's on our, our platform as one of our educators, he actually grew a million dollar account in his first year doing this. Okay. So it's really cool and it's really easy. Um, if you guys want to give it a shot, do it, especially if you're having like a rough time with Forex, this might be a simple way, but the thing is you got to be disciplined because if not, it could become like gambling. So you want to learn one of the strategies that the educators give you, and then you want to stay disciplined and, you know, don't over trade, you know, Evan Cabral, which is one of the educators on here. He says, if you lose more than two or three trades in a row, stop for the day. 
Um, you could also do two sessions a day with this. You could do one maybe in the morning, one in the evening, and you can actually try to get your percentage goal twice a day because you can literally do it sometimes within 20 minutes. Um, so it's really cool. But this is HFX, okay? I've done HFX in the past. I don't do it now because it's kind of, in, it's kind of not difficult, but it's mentally, it's tough to trade Forex and HFX and build. So what I would say is focus on one. Focus on one and get really good. But I do like HFX. I have traded HFX. And I do have a strategy for HFX, which I like. Okay? Janet says, Does the is the price of the membership going up after the seminar? So, Janet, I'm thinking that you're talking about the online convention. Okay? Um, which, by the way, guys, I do recommend for everybody here to get their online convention ticket. If you haven't done so already, it's only $25. And uh, it's definitely something that all of you guys need to be on. Uh, they usually release new products. I know for sure they're going to release some new stuff this uh, convention. Uh, also, you get to hear from some of the biggest, um, the biggest traders uh, and biggest builders. And, and you're going to hear from the CEO at the convention. So I definitely recommend you guys being on there. Uh, I'm trying to look for the link right now. So I can drop it. If anybody has the link, just drop it in the uh, in the chat box for me. But uh, to answer your question, uh, Janine, is nobody knows. Okay, uh, uh, the only people that know are not going to share that. So here's what I would tell you: is look, um, I was able to lock in my elite pack years ago. Okay, and because of that, I have a slightly discounted price on the elite pack. My encouragement to you guys that don't have elite pack yet, you know, listen, go to and free and, and get your people to get elite packs. Number one, number two, build a business so you can pay for your elite pack. Number three, just get your darn elite pack. If you got to get it and start making good money. All right. So guys, I dropped in the chat box right now. The, um, and Kevon did too. Thank you, Kevon. We, we kind of jinxed it there. Um, get your, get your event tickets guys. And also drop when you get it, drop it in the telegram so that we know I'm actually keeping track of a list of everybody going, uh, so I can add you to the list. Okay. So we don't know if the price is going up. I do recommend you guys getting it. Now I will tell you this in my opinion. Okay. You know, the elite pack one, they may get as high as 500 bucks a month, you know, and, and the reason being, and I'm not saying this is going to happen right away, but the reason being is we have too much value. I want you guys to understand. You know what? Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Uh, I, you know, Jason sent me this earlier. I'm going to, um, one second. Let me show you this. Jason sent me this. Look at this guys. Uh, Hopefully you guys can see that. My, my computer's been acting weird with this. Can you guys see that? Drop a one if you guys see this website. Drop a one real quick if you see what I see. Okay, cool. Check this out, guys. Look at this. Let's look at their programs. Intro, student, expert, pro. Oh, this is interesting stuff. Look at this, guys. Day trading pro. Nine thousand dollars. Okay. Now, what does it come with? Oh, it comes with a top trader course. It comes with a demo training account. Wow! Thank you for the demo. It comes with one course, two courses, a weekly mentorship session, aka one training a week. It's like one go live a week, one go live session a week. Self-study course. Thank you so much. The Market Whisper book. Oh my God. $9,000. Okay. Nowhere there do you see anything about scanners, trading alerts on an app. None of that, guys. Okay. This guy's charging $9,000. So why do I share this with you? Is because guess what? Okay. Yeah, and you guys need to understand this when you talk to people about our business. 235 is amazing, guys. Amazing. Okay. Their cheapest one is 500 bucks and it comes with nothing. 
a demo training account? Like how do you even put a demo training account in, in, in your package? Like that doesn't even make sense. Okay. So the reason I share this with you is going back to the question is because, you know, we're paying 235. If you have the elite 325. Okay. And the deal is that it can go, Elite can go up to 500 bucks at any point. Now it's not going to go immediately because our company is not like that, but let's say from 325 and 275, they keep adding stuff here and there. Maybe it goes up to 350 and, uh, you know, three, you know, 300 bucks a month or something like that. So what I would say guys is look, budget it in, work your way up to Elite so that you can be grandfathered into the price. Because as it keeps growing, as the elite package keeps getting better, you know, things can change. And, and, and the cool thing about the company is whatever price you came in at, they've always honored it. Meaning your price will never go up on you. Okay. Whatever package you have today, the company's not the type of company to just, you know, raise the price to all of us. What they typically do is new people will have to pay the price or people that, um, do not have the package at the time. So for instance, if you don't get elite, elite goes up, you would have to end up, you know, paying the price difference. Okay. So just little heads up. Nobody knows if prices are going up guys. So don't worry about it. But, uh, you know, just know that, you know, be ready for that. Okay. Amber says demo accounts are free. Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right, guys. So listen, we talked a lot about a couple, you know, about a lot of stuff. Let's see. Somebody asked me about gold. Let me just see real quick what the question on gold was. I think the question was that I think gold was going to go up. All right. And Gabriella, what do you mean about collecting orders? I'm going to mention, talk about that real quick and then we got to go. All right. Uh, I can't find the question on gold, but I'm going to show you guys real quick what we're looking at. All right. So let's talk about collecting orders. So what do I mean by that? So remember this guys, all that this is, when we're looking at all these charts, the only thing that we're really looking at, okay, it's really not that co it's complex, but if you really want to know what it is, it's, you're just literally looking at what people are willing to pay for something. I mean, that's really what you're looking at, right? So here, what we're looking at is, you know, like, uh, okay, let's do this. So what do I mean by collecting orders? So you see this, this is Bitcoin just kind of going up and down and all around between 8,800 and under 10,000, right? It's just bouncing around. So what this is doing is people are just buying, selling, buying, selling, buying, selling, buying, selling. What that means is the market is, think about it as, it's collecting a lot of money. Like money keeps going into a piggy bank. But finally, the market explodes. It says, I can't, this piggy bank can't hold any more money. And now you see it shoot up. And all that's saying is so much money went into buying Bitcoin by this moment that price had no choice but to explode to the top side. So that's what I mean by collecting orders. It's just that price is just hanging out in this area until finally the buyers won and so many people were freaking buying it that it shoots up. So guess what's happening now? The same thing. Price is just bouncing around. Now, could price decide to shoot down instead of up? Absolutely. But how would that happen? Only if enough people said, I do not want to buy Bitcoin anymore. I want to sell Bitcoin. And then enough people sell their Bitcoin to now push price down. So remember, all you're looking at is the amount of orders and people willing to buy and sell something. That's all that we're looking at. And so right now, because the dollar is weak, right now, because crypto is a hot topic, right now because people want to get their money out of the dollar and all this other stuff. Okay. Guess what? Bitcoin is going to eventually pop. In my opinion, it's going to pop. It's going to pop big. Okay. But guess what's happening right now? 
the market is collecting orders. It's collecting people's money so that it pops and goes to the top side. If that makes sense, drop a two in the chat. Okay, if that makes sense. All right, guys. Kevon is with me. Lewis is with me. Anybody else with us? Anybody else get lost? Jesse's with us. Good, good, good. All right. So somebody's asking about gold. Well, interesting thing about gold, right? Gold's doing the same thing that Bitcoin's doing right now. It's collecting orders. It's figuring out what it wants to do. Okay. Now it has been on a downward trend on the daily. So that means, you know, you had a high, then it dropped, then you had a lower high, then it dropped, then you had a lower high and it dropped. But, but it still has higher lows. Still has higher lows. If you understand what I'm saying, sorry for all my lines and I'm not going to delete them right now because they're all important to me. So Basically, price has been coming down, but it's kind of squeezing. I think they call this a wedge. Okay. It's kind of squeezing. Well, guess what? <laughs> when it squeezes and it gets to the end of this squeeze, it isn't going to have much of a choice. It's going to have to make a decision. And what happens when it makes its decision, whichever direction it explodes, it's going to really explode. Now, Going back to the DXY, the strength of the dollar. What did I tell you guys the strength of the dollar was? Okay, strength of the dollar is weak. Because of the strength of the dollar is weak, what should that potentially do to gold? Put it in the chat box. If the dollar is weak, and this is XAUUSD, what should that do to gold? Okay, unless, you, unless it changes. Okay. Exactly, guys. It's, it, it should go up, okay? Unless the dollar goes up, which I do not expect it to right now. Political unrest, COVID, too much money being pumped by the federal government for, for um, you know, COVID help and pandemic help. So dollar is not going to go up right now. So guess what? Bitcoin and gold... I'm very bullish on it, M meaning I think price is going to go up. All right, guys, who got value? If you got value tonight, let me see some two, two, twos in the chat. If you got value tonight, I hope that you did. Um, you know, let me know. Let me know if, if you guys want me to keep doing this, you know, drop it in the chats, you know, let people know you got value from this. I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to probably do these on Tuesdays. Uh, myself for a while. I was having other traders do it, but you know, I enjoy this. Uh, I enjoy doing this. What's up, Tracy? I enjoy doing this for you guys. All right. So um, let's, let's, let's spread the word. Let people know, um, you know, let people know that, uh, you know, you, you got, uh, you know, you got some questions and, and, you know, you got some questions answered. Okay. So let people know, drop in the, in, the, in the telegrams that you guys liked it, that you enjoyed it. Please let people know that we do these sessions. We do these for you guys. I know what it was like to be new and not know any of this stuff and, and, and trying to figure out why the heck people use certain words and, and it was very confusing, okay? Real quick, um, uh, you guys, uh, you know, the class is over now, but real quick for, uh, for Amber, uh, I do want to uh, share something I promised. Uh, so let me, um, let me share something real quick. Uh, she, she was asking me about the DeLorean, so I want to just show her something. So real quick about the DeLorean. So guys, here's the thing, okay? DeLorean is super, super simple to use the scanner, four steps. But after the four steps, it gets very, very deep. So I want you guys to be patient because the beginning is simple, but the deeper you get, it gets complex. There's a lot of powerful things to the DeLorean. So here's the cool thing. You can go in here, okay, and inside of the platform, look, two-hour DeLorean training, okay? First of all, go to Patrick Kenny's uh, boot camp. You guys already know that. Also, you have US 30 scalping training from Patrick Kenny. Very cool. He has a very simple way. By the way, shout out to PK. Made some good money uh, today for all of the people that uh, 
that uh, that wanted to uh, that that were on his session this morning. Okay, but let me show you guys where the secret sauce is for Delorean. Go. Oh, by the way, for people that were asking about market structure, go to Able Favorite Sessions. Oh, he doesn't have it on the Delorean one. Do it on his basics, and you'll see market structure. But let's go here real quick. Let me show you where the secret sauce of Delorean is. You go to Tyrone Foster. You go to these favorite sessions. Okay. So after you watch Patrick Kenny's boot camp, okay, you I also recommend going through this one, the DeLorean walkthrough for beginners 3.0. Okay, now these are like two hour classes, but you can actually fast forward through like the first 20 minutes because he's not really doing a whole lot. And then the end, you could also fast forward. So it ends up being like an hour and some change. Okay, watch this. But here's the thing is, you see this stuff here, guys, all of this here, Guess what? Tyrone used to charge three grand just to get this information, all right, for his course. So here's what I recommend to you guys is you want to start going through these favorites. I will tell you something. Some of these you will have to watch two and three times. But when you get it, it's going to change everything for you, okay? Also, here's very important information. Tyrone gives you homework. If you really want to consider yourself a DLO Nation DeLorean trader, you have to do the homework because that's what's going to get you to the next level. Okay? So do your homework. Pay attention to these. This is how you're going to be able to go to the next level to do this. Okay? A couple of other videos I'll tell you real quick. I would watch all of these here. Exit University. He tells you when to get out of trades. Okay? Uh, I'm a sniper in the market 3.0. You definitely want to watch this one as well. Okay. A sniper in the market 3.0. You want to watch both of them. A sniper in the market 3.0. Watch this one first. And then I'm a sniper in the market 3.0 part two. Watch that one second. Okay. So I would do all of these, all of these like videos that you see here at the top. I would do them and I would do them in the order of DeLorean walkthrough for beginners 3.0. I would do that one first. Then I would do, I'm a sniper in the market 3.0. I would do that one second. I'm a sniper in the market 3.0 part two. I would do that one third. Okay. And then finally I would do how to set up your charts from scratch and do the homework. He will explain how to set up your charts on trading view and then how to actually dive into the deeper things of DeLorean that are going to help you guys become more profitable. Okay. And honestly, guys, here's the truth. Unless you watch all of these videos two or three times, you're, you're not where you need to be yet. Okay, guys. So just, I encourage you go through this stuff. He gives you really, really good stuff. Okay. And listen, you know, don't be afraid guys to go through the beginners. Okay. In the PDF, if you guys have the DeLorean PDF, I show you that if you go to the beginners classes, you can go to Tyrone and you can go to, uh, Abel in here. I also mentioned Ralph cause Ralph is really good at market structure. Okay, so if you guys really want to learn market structure, you go to here. Ralph Dunka is very good uh, in the favorite session. Okay, he goes through a lot of cool stuff here that's really important. Okay, um, but you can also go to Abel. He's going to give you the, uh, there, now he has the favorites. Look, the DeLorean and structure. You guys want to read that or watch that, okay? Look at all these from Abel, guys. Guys, you saw what they were charging you for this information, okay? $9,000. So use your platform. It's going to help make you money. All right, Amber, I hope that helps you. So guys, that's it for tonight. Please drop some love in the chats. And if, if you guys got value from this, let people know that, you know, these calls are good and, and for them to get on it. We'll be back next Tuesday, same time, same place. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. Blessings to you guys. Have success this week.